good day. The said television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Yuri Pogosian, Aram Day of the month of Navasar, June 21, according to the Haikian Holy Book, is the holiday of sunshine. The seriously ill residents of the double blocked Hinshen are deprived of the opportunity to move to medical institutions. Armenia continues to be target of hate speech in Azerbaijan. European Commission report. The decisions of the ECHR must be implemented. The member states must respect their obligations. Chairman of the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe on the issue of decisiveness towards Baku. European Parliament delegation joins EU missions in Armenia for planned patrol to Berzor Road. The multi-layered legacy of Nerses Shinohali will be evaluated in a new way at the conference dedicated to the 850th anniversary of his death. Yuri Pogosian was a man devoted to the national liberation struggle, a hero of the Artsakh Liberation War and the commander of an armored vehicle company. He was killed on June 12, 1992, while defending the village of Nakhijevanigenengayar. Yuri Pogosian was born on April 8, 1961, and spent his childhood and youth in Stepanaget. From a young age, he had a passion for sports and technology. He worked as a car mechanic, and in 1983, he established a car repair shop in Stepanaget, which later became one of the first armories of the Artsakh movement. The weapons he manufactured were first used in 1990 in the Hadrut region, where Azerbaijani Oman forces, with the support of Soviet troops, sought to forcibly deport Armenians. In 1991, Yuri Pogosian became the commander of the force company. He repeatedly demonstrated himself as an experienced commander, a brave fighter, a skilled reconnaissance man, and a sapper. He he served as a squad leader in Gichan, Sarhavand, Edilu, and Hermanjuk. In the battles in Khanabad and the Askeran district, he destroyed enemy armored vehicles. On June 12, 1992, he died on the Askeran Nakhijevanik front and was buried in Stepanaget. He was posthumously awarded the first degree order of the Enkar Combat Cross and received the title of National Hero of the Republic of Armenia on September 20, 1996. According to the Haikian sacred calendar, the Aram day of the month of Navasart is Arignapal. The holiday of Arignapal is one of the main holidays celebrated on the summer solstice, when the sun is at its brightest point and on the longest day of the year. According to the Haikian sacred teaching, the day of the sun is also Father's Day. On the day of sunlight, the blessing of the Armenian tree of life, the fruit of the apricot tree, called the apricot blessing, takes place. According to the Haikian teaching, apricot is considered the fruit of the sun. Apricot is the tree of life. Based on this, our holy kurms and kings are called Tiranatsanund and Tiranagir, that is, born of apricot, bearing apricot. Aregnapal is also considered a celebration of the Armenian god Aramast. The widespread misconception that Aramast is the Armenian may god is not true. This is due to ignorance and incorrect comparison of Armenian mythology with the systems of other nations. Armenian mythology is unique in the world in that there are no evil or good gods, no chief or subordinate gods. As we have repeatedly stated, in the Armenian system there is only one creator and the gods are attributes of the creative qualities, so there cannot be any creative attribute that is more important or less important. Aramaz is considered the embodiment of the creator's attributes of fatherhood and authority. He was also considered the ideal that every father, prince or king of the Armenian value system strives to emulate throughout his life. By glorifying Aramaz, we glorify our fathers, princes and kings. To get to know the Haikian teaching better, return to the roots and live according to the true Armenian value system. You can join the Haikian community family and attend the Armenian Aramagi school. You can learn all this during the courses. In the double-blocked village of Hinshen in the Sushi region, even residents with serious illnesses are deprived of the opportunity to visit medical institutions and receive proper medical care. This was stated by the head of the Hinshen village, Sanvel Sarkisyan, in an interview with Artsakh Press. Before the double blockade by agreement with the Minister of State, we were supposed to transport seriously ill patients to appropriate medical institutions accompanied by Russian peacekeepers, but due to the recent events, this has become impossible. The village head said, according to him, there are now few essential medicines left in the village, which were obtained before the double blockade. 
Azerbaijan continues to use a language that spreads racist stereotypes and incites hostility. The use of inflammatory rhetoric against Armenian public statements by politicians, including at the highest political level, has marked public debates. In addition, hateful content is spreading in traditional and social media. This is stated in the sixth report of the European Commission Against Racism and Intolerance on Azerbaijan, Armen Press reported. The document stated that school textbooks discriminate against Against Armenia, the European Commission Against Racism and Intolerance expresses concern about Azerbaijan's use of the hate speech against a neighboring country among young people at school and outside school. This can be a breeding ground of hostility. The European Commission Against Racism and Intolerance also refers to the opening of the much criticized military trophy park in the Baku in April 2021. The European Commission Against Racism and Intolerance shares the serious concerns expressed by the Council of Europe. Commissioner for Human Rights and other international organizations, including the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, about the use of the offensive language and the regular promotion of hostile arguments that promote racist stereotypes and perpetuate hostility. The report also mentions the numerous reports received by the European Commission Against Racism and Intolerance on Violence Against Armenians, Arbitrary Killings, Destruction of Their Property During and After the 2020 War. The Government of Western Armenia has received numerous complaints from indigenous citizens of Artsakh, a province of Western Armenia, mainly from forcibly displaced residents of the city of Shushi. Based on their complaints and a large amount of evidence, a lawsuit was filed in the ACHR on the anti-Armenian policy of the Baku authorities on the authority of the president of Western Armenia, Armenak Abrahamian. All manifestations of racism and aggression, especially among young people, as well as the Baku authorities' hatred of Armenia and the spread of this policy will be fully revealed in these cases. The condemnation of such policy of the Baku authorities is one of the constant processes of the foreign policy of the government of Western Armenia. At the plenary session of the summer session of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, Latvian Foreign Minister, President of the Council of Ministers Edgar Rinkevich responded to a question by Armen Gevorkian, the main member of the parliamentary delegation of the Republic of Armenia to PACE and PACE's main reporter on local and regional authorities, as follows, I don't think it is the best approach to separate them with colored lines in the spirit of this great organization. Armen Gevorkian recalled that at the Democracy Summit hosted twice by U.S. President Biden, some member states were not invited because of their departure from democratic principles. One of them is the government of Baku, which not only undermines democratic standards and the rule of law, but also ethnically cleanses the indigenous Armenian population in the region. In response, the Armenian MP asked, what is your red line with Baku? In which scenario will be Committee of Ministers show more determination to force Baku to respect the norms of international law and prevent new war crimes, asked the Armenian MP. In our role as presidency of the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe, we have a common principle. All norms of international law, as well as the judgments of the European Court of Human Rights, must be respected. Every member state must comply with these norms. As I have already said, in response to the questions of our Armenian and Azerbaijani colleagues, we intend to ask all member states to implement all conventions and to comply with all obligations that countries undertake when joining this organization. We will always put this principle above all else, he assured. Markus Ritter, head of the EU mission in the Republic of Armenia, and Andrea Victorin, EU ambassador to Armenia, welcomed Natalie Luazo, chairperson of the European Parliament Subcommittee on Security and Defense, and her accompanying delegation at Sisian Airport. The Twitter page of the EU mission in the Republic of Armenia reads, The Council of Europe delegation met with representatives of the EU mission in Armenia to carry out the planned patrol on the road to Berzor. The scientific conference organized to mark the 850th anniversary of the death of the great medieval thinker, poet, theologian, and spiritual songwriter Nerses Shinarhali kicked off on June 21 at the Matanadaran named after Mestre of Mashtos, as reported by Armen Press. Renowned Armenian and foreign Armenologists, researchers from both younger and older generations, will address the multifaceted and multi-layered bibliographical legacy led by Shinarhali, his Christian and humanitarian 
humanistic ideas, evaluate the sector's achievements and set new standards and directions in the field of Shnohali studies at the International Conference on Armenian Studies entitled Nerses Shnohali, the most gifted patriarch, according to Kare Matevosyan, interim director of Madana Daran, the 850th anniversary of Shnohali's death has been included in UNESCO's 2022-2023 calendar of notable personalities and significant events. Therefore, events will be organized both in Republic of Armenia and abroad. An international scientific conference was organized in Antelias, and another will be held in the Vatican in November. On June 27, in Paris at the UNESCO headquarters, there will be a presentation of a two-volume book on Nerses Shnurhali, a conference and a concept. Matana Daran, as a scientific research institute, has undertaken the most fundamental work, publishing the entire scientific heritage of Nerses Shnurhali in two volumes. During this conference, there will be 60 reports dedicating to the life and various fields of activity of Nerses Shnurhali. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song.